Welcome to Daily Watch Live number 94. How are you, Christian? I'm, I'm very fine, thank you. It's raining outside. It's raining outside. We have a we have a quite a week. I was I was surprised and impressed a bit impressed yesterday by the by the uh, announcement of the only watch pieces. You saw them on Instagram? Oh no, I didn't. That was massive. I like it, it, who on Instagram did not post anything about only watch. They did well. Yeah. I like that Patek is not coming out with a with a wristwatch. I like that Ulus Nada is coming with a spaceship kind of thing. What I don't like is too many people are looking at what <laughs> Max Busa is doing on an ordinary basis. Um, there's yeah. so much childish, you know, uh, playing around with horology, uh, which I, I, I appreciate it, I must admit, I like it. But it also shows, which is good, uh, the effect that Max's wonderful watches has on other watch brands. True. Uh, there, there, there might be a bit of overkill of creativity. Yes, that, that, that was probably what I was trying to say. Yeah, but I didn't say it. And uh, I think that the, the color of choice this <coughs> year is orange. I see a lot of yeah. orange in yeah, the yeah, straps, yeah. in in the dial configuration. You're Dutch. You like that? I like that. But uh, in general, I'm, I like the creativity. So I'm, I'm I'm an indie guy. So and I think that is the the, the big uh, testament and the big uh, uh, contribution of yeah. independent watches. So let's see what happens in um, November when uh, Only Watch goes live and all the watches will be sold. We'll, we'll get back to that later. It's definitely not only wristwatches. No, no. It Which is, is interesting. It's creative. Yeah, it, it is. Um, okay, let's, let's quickly jump to the main topic today because we're going to discuss uh, a watch from a brand that we both really appreciate. Oh, and yeah. A model that as far as I see, uh, at least also in my awareness as a watch fan, is uh, a big icon. I'm not saying this lightly, it's the Lange One. Yeah. And for me, that's a big icon. It is, 1994. 1994. I still remember the day, uh, and I, I remember the, 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 I wasn't that much into horology back then, but I bought the magazines like you did probably, and I saw this event where... Mr. Gunther Blumlein and Mr. Walter Lange. Yeah. I think Reinhard Meis was also involved, but at least there was this group and they launched, for me, I didn't know the history of Lange, a brand new brand, four watches, a core collection, and it was like thunder. It was. I, I, mean, it, I guess everybody was looking at it and then they missed on the cabaret. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but you shouldn't because the cabaret is an important watch. Yeah. Very important watch. And the funny thing is, we had a tank talk recently. That is the tank of Lange. The cabaret is the tank of Lange. I think it's a long shot because I, I hear you, but but I don't see much appreciation for the cabaret in the market. I think it will come back. Okay. It will come Mark back. Mark you my words. Uh, that's so, a press embargo, but something really nice is coming up. Okay. Yeah. So we have the cabaret that was one of the four. We have the, the tourbillon pour le mérite mm -hmm. that was the, 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 the high-end uh, tourbillon in a limited edition of 150. We had the 1815, which is basically up until today an important uh, Milestone. Uh, model yeah. Yeah. In, in the Lange um, uh, collection. But what stood out for me, and apparently for a lot of people, was the, the, the Lange one with its unique dial configuration. Off-center yeah. dial. Uh, big dates yeah. on, on one o'clock. Yeah, it was perfect. It was and still is. And thirty-eight point five is the right size for a long one. And yeah. many other langes, by the way. Uh, the Grand Lange was later. Uh, it's still a good-looking watch, but it, the Lange one, the original Lange one, is just a stunner. And we're going to talk about the few Lange ones because it's not many, because Lange does not do many. Of anything, but if you count all the references on the Lange One over yeah. the over the last twenty seven years, yeah. it's a lot. It adds up to more than hundred. It does, definitely, it does. But the first editions are pretty rare. Yeah. So what uh, we're now, what we're now going to yeah. do? We're going to dive into five references that we think, um, and we did some research in the market on the auction houses that are really taking off because that's the point we're going to. Lange was for 20 years, 20 more years, it was appreciated 
people knew the brand, sure. but it was still a bit undervalued. It was not being part of the red race on, on, on the auction floors with Patek, with AP, with Rolex. But that is changing, right? I think it definitely changes. Uh, I think the finishing of the of the movements is uh, and was a game changer. Uh, Renault Papi, uh, they invented the Fusé chain that uh, yep. Lange also did. So uh, Anthony de Haas, uh, the Dutch watchmaker, he's also Renault Papi and he's in charge of uh, movement development for quite a few years, actually. Yeah, so Renault Papi, uh, they definitely had an, a great impact uh, on the German watch brand, which is part of uh, Richemont. Yeah. So they're located in this uh, tiny former East Germany German town called Glashütte. And the neighbor is Glasu Original and Tutima and, and, no and, most, and, no and yeah. we are, there are more than 10 brands that officially can carry mm. the, 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 the hallmark, the mark yeah. uh, made in Glasu. Yeah. So yeah. it is. Um, yeah. But um, let's let's move into let's start with the beginning, because one of the five references that that you should pay attention to mm. is the very first one. That is the one that was announced and that was shown to the public in 1994. And that's the reference 100.001. Yeah. And what's so special about that? Well, uh, you can't see the movement, which is very, very, very strange. And that model was actually in production also in 1995. I, re I remember I met a friend some years ago and he wanted to sell this Lange one to me. And I was like, I don't want that. Well, it's one of the very early ones. But I can't see the movement. That was with the okay. That was with the solid case. So that was in 1995. Well, at least the papers were signed 1995. Uh, of course, German papers. Yeah, yeah. It was it yeah. was like what BNO was for the Danes for many years ago. Uh, not anymore. Uh, Lange was uh, the brand for the Germans. It was quite a local brand. Right? Yeah, it was. It was. That was a local pride in it. Um, and uh, I I th I think the revival of watchmaking in Glashütte was also very important. Yeah. Uh, back then, uh, they had great help from uh, Kurt Klaus of IWC. Yeah. And back then, IWC, Schessel Kultur and Lange und Söhne, uh, they were one group. Uh, they belonged to, to, to the Mannesmann uh, group, yeah. which was bought by Richemont in 2000. 2000. Yeah, in 2000, uh, which had a great impact on AP as well, because they actually owned, I think, 20% of Schessel Kultur back then. Yeah. Strange. Anyway, we're going to talk about Lange. Anyway, the, the, the 001, so that is the first one that was in production for uh, not too long a period because yeah. people realized, I want to see the movement. Lange so is was, the movement. Yeah, so it was quite quickly, I think it was maybe 95 or 96, it was it was uh, uh, moved on to the 002 and 3, and those has had the, 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 the sapphire case bags. Um, there are some, I found that there are other references, the 005, 7 and 11. Mm -hmm. They also had close solid case bags. A platinum one, uh, a white gold and a pink gold. There you go. So these are, I think, rarer than hen's teeth because I, ha I only have seen the, the yellow gold solid case bag. Yeah. But when we, get, when we look at the market, um, they really took off. And that started also in Germany at Dr. Krotz auction house yes dr helmut Kott, the yeah. guy with the biggest knowledge in i mean we recently talked about him because we were, we were covering stellar dials uh from a great article by a collected man and dr helmut Kott actually did some great research uh, and i think he made a book on watch dials so dr helmut Kott has been a specialist in 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 uh, in uh, not only wristwatches but also pocket watches so he knows Lang und Söhne already for many, many years. Yeah. Because, uh, uh, of course, uh, they had the Beobachtungsuhren uh, during the Second World War for the German pilots. Yeah. So uh, Lang und Söhne was one of five. You had Wimper, you had Lange, you had IWC, you had uh, Zeno, and what was the last one? I forgot. I forgot. Anyway, the Bill Bunting to one. And so Lange did actually a wristwatch back then. Yeah. Of course, for the for the pilots. But they didn't really do wristwatches until 1994. Yeah. But Dr. Helmut Kott, he knew the traditions of Saxon watchmaking, if you like. Yeah. And how they built the movements. And I think in, in 2019, in November, he sold at his auction... Um, for the first time, uh, 001 made 40,000 plus euros in auction. And that is more than double what, what was the price, what the average price mm. of a pre-owned Lange one. 
So that is basically, that also seems how recent the, 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 the increasing demand and increasing appreciation of the Bangor One is. Only back then. And now it is followed at Philips and at uh, Christie's. They make between 40 and 50,000 euros. That is the price for 001. Let's move to the 101. Sorry, I have to make a correction. Okay. Laco. Laco. Not Sino. La no, Sino is Sino Basel that is yeah, uh, quite no, recent. Com completely Laco. different. Yeah, Laco. Laco was one of the five. I'm Sorry glad about you that. Corrected. Yeah. Okay, Lange, uh, 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 number two of the very collectible pieces that we would like to discuss with you in the Lange 1 range is the 026, 101026. You love numbers, don't you, Mr. Nick I love Nick numbers. Meyer. Oh, I'm, I dig numbers. Yes, you because do. Because it gives structure in the story. It does. <laughs> it does, indeed. And I know that people are sitting there listening or watching, and they will double-check on you. Yeah, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Please do. But the 026... But he's not is um, actually the only steel Lange one. Mm. And that is a watch that officially never existed. Yeah. They, they presumably they made between 20 and 30 pieces, depending on the source. Yeah. I found 20 to 30. And they do, the last one was sold at uh, uh, Antiquorum uh, last month, two months ago, for more than 300,000 Swiss francs. But they were made, at least some of them, for an Italian retailer. Yeah. Right? And... And Dr. Benjamin Clymer, <laughs> he's not a doctor. Uh, he once owned, I don't know if he still owns it. No, he sold it. But He, he sold, sold it, it yeah. yeah. He, 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 uh, he spent a lot of uh, dimes on, um, on a Lange one in steel. Uh, back then, uh, I was with uh, Willem Schmidt in, at the Coma Lake. Yeah. And he was talking about that watch. At that point, I heard the number 12. You know, there were 12 known. But probably they, they, they've been popping out. But but uh, Mr. Schmidt also told me there are more steel lange. Because once yeah. you've been in the company for 25 years, yeah. which of course is not a lot since the, the company started in 1994, uh, you will receive a, I, I believe it's an 1815 in steel. So they keep it in the safe. And they give it to you on your 25th anniversary with lange. So of course there's not a lot of those either. But I have never seen an 1815 in steel on no. the market. No, I, I guess they they keep it with pride. Probably, probably. And probably with a closed case back because of the engraving on the back. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That, that, so that will be probably also in the hundreds of thousands of euros, Swiss francs, if, if it comes to the market. Yeah. But the steel one, I, I, I really like it. I really, yeah. it, it's, 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 well, it's the purest of Langes. And it's contrary to what the philosophy of Lange was back then. It was only precious materials. They, yeah. they only started with steel, as you know, with the, with the Odysseus quite recently. But that, okay, this is the second one, the, the 026. Then we move to the 101035 reference number. Darth. The Darth. Why is it called the Darth? Tell us. It has to do with the, the date uh, yeah. disc, right? It's, Absolutely, it's, it's black. black. Yeah, It's black on black. It's platinum, yeah. yeah. 38.5 30, millimeters, yes, so sir. the original size, yeah. and it's all black. And probably it's made between uh, 1999 and 2006, and probably only in 50 pieces. Yeah. It was actually a Danish guy who explained me uh, the importance of the Darth. His name is Anas. Uh, and uh, immediately I started to hunt the market for one. And at that point, they weren't that expensive. And again, 50 pieces within Lange production is not rare. I mean, there, there are other. I, I had once had a gray dial perpetual datograph yeah. uh, in white gold. Uh, that was less than 50 pieces made. So it's not rare that 50 pieces. But is this 50 pieces as in a limited edition? Or no. is this just the organic full production? full production. Okay. These are not limited editions no, no, at exactly. all. So the Darth was just made... Uh, you know, for seven years yeah. uh, in approximately 50 pieces. So definitely not a lot of them on the market. And it's a great looking piece because of the oddity of the date wheel color. It's a beautiful piece. It's a great piece, yeah. Actually, I found an auction file uh, quite recently on yeah. an online Christie's auction, uh, but in May 2021. Yeah, so two it's months very ago. recent. And that is forty-seven thousand U.S. dollars. Is that including uh, including buyer's buyer's salary? No, buyer's uh, um, fee. I, I think it is, but I'm not sure. But let's say it's it's twenty percent more. Then still, 
I was a bit surprised because I would have expected to be more expensive. I think the dilemma, again, is I appreciate the appreciation of Lange ones right now, especially the early editions. Yeah. But 50 pieces is not rare when you talk Lange. Two pieces, that's rare, no matter the brand. No, but I think it's th- that's true because with Lange, it's all it, you always have to go in a different perspective when it comes to 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 um, supply. If you compare to Patek, for instance, sure, because Patek annual production is times 10 easily. Sure, sure. I mean, even uh, even though Patek mentioned that steel is rare in their production, yeah, uh, you still see a lot of steel watches. Yeah. Uh, so especially in the, in the most recent years, I remember when we were in Singapore with Patek. They introduced uh, 500 of the Aquanaut with a red tropical strap and then red dial. Yeah. 500. I mean, you still have to produce the normal one with black dial. Yeah. Uh, so how many did you do? A uh, thousand? Yeah. Out of 62,000 uh, annual production. Yeah. And for Langa, to put it in perspective, we always look at between four and 5,000 annual production, right? Maybe it's a and bit higher uh, now with the Odysseus and with the, the strong demand. No, the Odysseus in steel is around 120 a year. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. No. And it's not an official number. It's just something I just said. No, I heard it during the introduction. And if you ask William Schmidt now, he said, I never said that. He did. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> the next one, a 101050050. That was... Um, a recent one that was a, a launched in 2015. And basically, if you look at the Lange One from 1994 and the basic one in 2021, you don't see that much difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it is evolution. And that, that, that is an indication of the quality of the design, of the initial design. Mm. However, in 2015, there was an important fact that they launched a new caliber. In 2015, the watch was revised internally, let's say, mm. from, from the inside. On that occasion, they also launched the 050, which is the only one, I, I guess, in honey gold. I love honey gold. I mean, everybody has the, you know, Omega has the Setna, and they have this this different, uh, you know, Hublot has magic gold. Yep. They have honey gold, which is really charming. Honey gold. Yeah, I think I think this was the first, this was a premiere because now in in recent years they have honey gold editions and and, and yeah they do from, yeah yeah for the 175th uh, anniversary yeah. Uh, models yeah. yeah back then in 2015 they made 20 um, and they sell now for between 50 there was 50 54,000 euro retail and now they go for uh, almost double but if you look at it what I do like about Lange is. Patek and Rolex is just crazy prices on the secondary market and whatever auction. Lange is, that's pretty reasonable. You know, you, you you sit back and you, you when your hammer hits the third time, you go, that's that's okay. That's yeah. pretty reasonable. Yeah. So <laughs> they just started. They just started. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. We're I close. mean, we, 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 we can sit here next year on this very date. It's July 2nd. 2021 we're going to sit in one year talk about you know we're going to keep these papers yeah and we're going to update all the numbers with them the same references so yeah uh, the, the time is running out here but you sh- if, if you can find the early we're talking what 1994 until 2006 ish still early yeah. years yeah go get yourself a 38.5 millimeter longer one whatever the metal if you get a steel one You're pretty lucky. Yeah, I mean, they have always been expensive, the steel ones, because they are so rare and they're not definitely not part of a normal production. They were special pieces. And Lange did that because they were a new brand. They had yep. to do something special to make the retailers believe in them. So if an Italian a, a retailer insisted and he would buy 30 pieces, of course they did that. They did. They yeah. did that. Yeah. Today, no. Impossible. And funny thing is, here's another thing, what Lange is today and what COVID taught them. See, Lange, they produced probably just around 4,000 pieces in 2020. Yeah. And from the 175th anniversary models, they could not rely on the dial supplies from Switzerland. So Anthony de Haas and his production team, they realized they could produce those amazing dials themselves. So Lange is not only a wonderful watch and movement manufacturer, they also do 
wonderful tiles in Glashütte. Beautiful. How amazing is that? There is a lot of heritage and a lot of to, to be told on Lange. I, I want to finish with the last one because yeah. we would uh, uh, um, we would mention five. The fifth one is reference 117. Zero three five, mm-hmm. and that's the only one in my list that is not thirty eight point five, but it's forty point nine. It's a grand lange. That's a grand lange. Yeah, platinum <laughs> lumen. Do you like the lumen? Actually, it was it was in, on on the SAHH in two thousand sixteen. Mm-hmm. My first uh, reaction was a bit of disappointment. And you know, you can't say lumen. Back then, Angelo Bonazzi from Panerai, he got really upset because his watch is called Lumino. So Willem Smith had to change the name. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know that. That's no. It. Okay. Yeah. But and I, I think it's it's a beautiful piece. It, yeah. it was way more expensive than the regular longer one because of because of course the the, the dial mm. where you can have an insight in the in the movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it's not. I like it. Of course, I, I love every longer because of the sheer quality, because mm. of the design language. It's beautiful. But for me, it's not. It's too much. Comparable to other watches, while the Lange One, especially in white gold with the silver dial, is the Lange One. It's non-comparable to anything else. That's the shit. That is the cow. The other ones are calves. <laughs> That's it. Please, um, we have to finish. Yeah, but please share your love for Lange. Uh, let us know what you think about Lange. Uh, did you buy a piece recently? Which piece, timepiece, did you buy? I know that that. You know, a lot of, uh, if you take people from uh, Red Bar Copenhagen, there's a lot more Lange on the table now. Yeah. So it's, Lange has a lot of love around them right now, which I appreciate because I, I've loved that for many years. I like your idea. Let's follow Lange on a, on, on a, on a structural yeah. basis. Yeah. Follow the market, yeah. follow the models, etc. cetera. And, and, Absolutely. And, and share the passion. Please subscribe yeah. to our uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. And thank you very much for listening. Have time. a great week. I hope the sun is shining where you are. Bye.